One Explorer X1 gaming handheld has been announced and pricing might surprise you. MSI has confirmed Claw 2 gaming handheld is already in the pipeline. Asus ROG Strix RTX 4080 Super is very expensive in UK. It's more than 40% above MSRP. And lastly, Intel has quietly launched their Core i7 14790F CPU only for China. Firstly, we have IT Home has reported this article here and as you can see it's it's a gaming handheld basically and it's coming from the one x player or you could say yeah one x player handheld and it also says it's a three in one pc so interesting way to say that because obviously you can uh, use it as a tablet as a whole console as you can already see and maybe without that we don't know we'll see about that but it's equipped with these processors we're looking at which is intel kuru ultra which is again this is a translation so doesn't matter intel core ultra 5 125h or it's going to be utilizing ultra 7 155h processor and as i mentioned there was a third one basically which is the added keyboard you can utilize it as a like laptop or something but yeah that's why it's, they're calling it a three in one pc so this is the whole spec list here we don't really have to look into it because we already know what intel core ultra processors are about so it's no big deal so these these are the processors they're going to be using which is the intel core ultra 7 155h or the 125h these are the two models they're going to be utilizing for this handheld they're also claiming that the battery life for this particular model will be 8 hours, 11 hours, depending on your, you know, usage. And the battery size, as you can already tell, 16,890 milliamps. So it's quite large, that is for sure, but it's also quite expensive. And before we look into the pricing, let's look into some aesthetics here, which is obviously the whole size of the form, form factor of it, which is kind of neat looking, not gonna lie, it, it looks good. And this is the whole thing. We can see the front of it. Of course, these are the, all the IOs from the side. We'll look into it shortly. And yeah, it also comes with the keyboard. So we have to look into it because we already have the pricing listed already here. You can already see right over here. It says Ultra 5 125H, 16 gigs RAM and 1 terabyte of storage will be coming at 65.90 yuan. But for the first offer price, they're offering 59.99 yuan, of course. Ultra 7 155H 32 gigs RAM coming with one terabyte of storage is also at 79.99, but the offer price is 72.99. So they're giving an offer price first offer price. I, I guess that will not be lasting for too long. Ultra 7 155H 32 gigs 2 terabytes, basically the same specs, but the storage is one terabyte extra is going to be 77.99, and the Ultra 7 155H 64 gigs of RAM. And coming with 4 terabytes of storage is, as you can already tell, is $99.99. When we convert that to USD, however, we have some pricing listed here, which is for the $59.99, we can say it's like a $840 USD. But ex this pricing here, which is going to be the after the offer is over, is going to be $925. Again, it, it isn't included by the tax or anything, just the Chinese pricing converted to USD. So just to give you a perspective, right? And... Also for the this variant here, as you can see, 17899 will be coming at 1110 USDs, which is also like a like a, a kind of makes sense when you convert that, obviously. And uh, the 8399 U1, which is the Ultra 7 155H, is coming at 1180 USDs. Also quite pricey, not gonna lie. And of course, the most uh, top of the line, I could say, the flagship variant of that is coming at 1490. USD is basically $1,500. It basically is a similar price of a, a GPU, like a RTX 3090 or something. So I don't know what they're thinking about selling this product. Uh, yeah, it, it, it is too expensive in my opinion. But yeah, all, overall, it looks good. Just the pricing, I don't think it's going to be attracting too many people because it's very expensive. As I mentioned, there's an I.O. which you can already can see that we have a USB A 3.2 and there's a, I don't know what that is. I'm guessing that's a card reader. Probably that is the case. Not sure because it says TF something in Chinese. So I can't really uh, mimic that. Obviously, 3.5 millimeter jack over right over here. And there's an Oculink. This is an interesting uh, thing we can look into. We're not sure what that is about, but it's a very interesting connect. So we'll see about that. It also comes with USB C. Well, type c 4.0 and usb c 4.0 two of them which is kind of crazy they're offering two usually it's like one 
So uh, interesting that why they're offering two. We'll see about the use. But anyway, this this particular variant, um, it's too expensive. It, it's a good like concept. I'm not gonna lie, it's a really good concept. Look at that. It's it's just three in one PC basically, and you can play on hand on hand or just use it as a laptop or something. I guess it kind of works like that. And I guess that's why they're charging 1500 USDs for the top of the line flagship variant. So maybe it works, maybe it doesn't, but to me, it's too expensive. Next up, we have some IGN report and they have reported Clifford Chun, the system product managing director, and he has something interesting to talk about. So IGN basically asked about the Claw 2. Well, we already know what Claw is already now because it has been, you know, a in CES, we get to see the MSI Claw handheld product. Another handheld is coming to the market, of course. And now we're discussing about the Claw 2. That is interesting. Because if you look into it, Chun has replied with this. It's basically this, oh, it's already in the pipeline. So what is the release window between each model getting released after the previous one? So Chun has replied to this. is that it really depends on, for example, the CPU or graphics upgrade down the road. So just keep in mind that the, and then just check it out. When something like this happens, so do a refresh and then you will anticipate that MSI will come out with something similar. Basically, they're waiting for another like a refresh, I'm guessing, for the MSI Claw 2. That would be the case. Or maybe like literally a complete new SKU. That would be my, that would be more sensible, right? Because I don't think they'll be releasing at Claw 2 right away. Just it has, Claw just released, right? So it, it doesn't make sense why would they would go for Claw 2 already. But if there is some kind of refresh product, right? And there's a possibility, like we already know Meteor Lake is releasing, but after that we have Arrow Lake. It is coming real soon. So I don't know, we, we, we're gonna, we get to see that all, uh, instantly. We don't know for sure. But yeah, I, I feel like uh, there will be a refresh variant. Not sure it's going to be called uh, Claw 2, but possibly it will. But my my also guess would be that they might be going for a literal new, like a new SKU when the drops they're going to add into the Claw 2, the version 2, and then version 3, because it's also in the pipeline. They're thinking about it. So Claw 2 is also coming. I'm not so soon, but it is in the pipeline. But for now, we get to enjoy this one because it looks good. You know, MSI has done a great job making this product and I, I feel like it's it looks uh, phenomenal. It, it's, 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 it's not too bad. And of course, like one more thing that they did ask is that OLED display wasn't added because, you know, uh, why not, right? That was a question that came because, you know, MSI, it's MSI. They, they can do that, right? So OLED didn't really come into it because, you know, the competition wasn't really offering, the other competition basically isn't really offering that much of a, like an OLED display type. Maybe some of them are, but not uh, in general consensus. It isn't really a thing already. So I don't think they're thinking about it, but maybe with Claw 2, we might be seeing some OLED display with this. So that would be interesting. Very interesting to look at. And next up, we have something spicy because... Well, the RTX 4080 Super is already out. Well, I'm guessing uh, by the time I'm recording, RTX 4070 Super is also out. But for the uh, pricing, of course, the RTX 4080 Super pricing has been listed. We already know it is, they remain the same, which was shocker, right? They did go for that, but there is some bad news coming with it. Well, we can buy the RTX 4080 Super Trinity for 959 uh, pounds, I'm guessing, yep. And then the Zotec RTX 4080 Super Trinity, the white variant is coming at 1019.99, of course, 1020 meaning. But uh, it's a pounds, pounds price because in, in, it has been listed in the UK. But we have the Asus GeForce RTX 4080 Super RG Strix OC 16 gigs. That's some, uh, uh, yeah, it's a, quite a big name. Coming at, well, 1349.99, basically 1350. You're paying almost 350 usds or 400 when you compare it to this one 400 are not usds pounds in uk 400 for this version itself i don't know what asus is thinking to price that because why would you go for that it doesn't really make sense to go for rtx 4080 super asus variant of course which is the top of the line the flagship of theirs and it's coming 400 pounds premium i just don't understand it because, you know, look at the other pricing here, like the Asus, literally this variant, which is not the OC, uh, I should say the top of the line. It's just a tough variant, right? Also coming with 1,200 pounds. What is Asus up to? Anyway, let's let's look into more pricing list here, shall we? So look at this. Asus GeForce RTX 4080 is tough, basically. In euros, we're getting 1149. Well, of course, pound and euros are not the same, but it's kind of close, you know, all the time. There's, a, there's some, you know, 
similar pricing going on so we have to we get to see that but anyway let's look into the other pricing here which is the msi g4 rtx 4080 super ventus 3 xoc coming at 1149.90 so again it's euros pricing and uh the rtx 4080 supreme again another this is msi's top of the line right but they're still not going that crazy in terms of pricing look at that 12.99 basically 1300 euros when you compare it to the pound pricing, of course, it's not the same apples to apples comparison, but it's still, they're cheaper. Amazon is cheaper in terms of like the, their top of the line card. Uh, the RTX 4080 Super Gaming X Slim is coming at a little bit less pricing, but I would still not consider buying that because it's still going over like a thousand or maybe like 11, 1100. So, right, it's, it's just uh, not really worth it. Gigabyte, well, they have done something crazy, just like Asus, basically giving us 1359.90, basically 1360 euros. And all I have to say, uh, I don't have to say anything because it's just bonkers. No need to play RTX 4080 Super for this kind of pricing. Literally, no need to, because you know you, you can get those other. They look, I mean, Zotac looks good, right? It, it looks good. So what's the point of going for that? Again, MSI, is the super, uh, basically the white variant gaming Slim X, it's coming a bit premium, not much, like 10 euros, that's it, not much, it's all good. Look at Gigabyte, as I said, these pricings, I kind of see that, because they make sense, 11, 49, 90, it, it makes sense, the wind force variant, even the wind force in terms of like uh, overclocking might not go crazy, but still, it, it does the job, you know? And then, yeah, the rest of the pricing are similar from the Gigabyte here, as you can see. This one is literally similar to the Winforce, or, or it is the Winforce, so I have no comment there. Anyway, and the Gaming Super OC, of course, Super Gaming OC, I should say, is coming at 12.9. So, not a bad pricing there, but uh, Asus, they went crazy in terms of pricing. 13.49, and, of course, we have the Gigabyte Aorus Master. Like, you might be able to, like, convince me that, okay, they're, like, the, you know, the top of the line and they overclock more and stuff, blah, blah, blah. But still, it's when you have a price uh, card like this, which is the RTX 4080 Super Trinity, and even the white variant is quite cheaper, right? And why, what's the point, you know? Even, like, the uh, top variant also isn't that bad, so just... Yeah, I mean, if you're interested, maybe you can buy it, but it's just, I, in my opinion, it's a waste of money because... 400 euro, pounds is just massive difference when you compare it with the literally the bottom line right or the msrp basically reaching up to 40 percent it's crazy it is and next up we have something interesting and i love it because when you look into this first of all thank you zad wang he has clicked this and well when you look at this price uh or not pricing this box here what do you feel I like the aesthetics, you know? And obviously, we're, we're like, wait, they have a black variant of Intel CPUs? We didn't know that. Well, when you look into this, now we have it. But the sad news is, this isn't, uh, you know, it's a, a Chinese model, of course. And the box looks good, even though it doesn't matter. But the box looks very good. Like, why haven't we got this kind of design already? Intel just nailed it in terms of boxing. Like, like it, uh, it, it looks good. It really looks very good. The product we're talking about is basically the i7 14790F variant. Basically, you can already tell it's a i7 model 14790 and also F, so meaning that no iGPU, so interesting. But Intel has already listed the specification here, which is very much interesting. They didn't really announce that. It just popped off in China. That's why I guess they didn't really... Uh, talk about it so yeah the total cores we're looking at is 16 cores basically eight performance eight efficient and of course total threads are 24 threads basically and the max turbo frequency we're looking at 5.4 gigahertz intel turbo boost max technology 3.0 frequency reaching also 5.4 and the performance score for the uh, max frequency will be 5.3 and the efficiency will be 4.2 Perf performance score base will be 2.1 they go very low basically and efficiency core will be going up to 1.5 which is the base frequency of course and the uh, cache we're getting at 36 megabytes of intel smart cache the L2 cache is 24 megabytes and the, and the processor base power which is 65 watts rated but of course with the maximum turbo power we're reaching up to 219 watts so it's still kind of crazy that it can reach up to that it is crazy and yeah, it has been launched already, so we can already sell the Q1 launch. No one knows, because they didn't really announce it for whatever reason. And yeah, basically it's a LG 1700 uh, 
support for this processor here so no big deal but the big deal is that the box looks absolutely stunning i i really like the box they haven't really they just nailed it but only for china come on come on intel you can do better than that right only for china really and the box also only for china that is kind of, kind of like a discrimination i'm just kidding no discrimination but still it, it looks good the specs looks also good it's not really that bad the question is why only china right it's it's a interesting uh concept or just the thought of it anyways that is it for today what do you think about the rtx 4080 super pricing which in my opinion the asus variant except for the asus and the gigabyte variant others are like acceptable the rest way too expensive just way too expensive yeah and also what about this what do you think about that do you think we should sh we should be getting this in like uh the whole world because black you know black and white aesthetic i like it I, that's my favorite color so yeah see ya